Good morning, everyone. It is a brisk December day here. Got some snow everywhere. We are back on the S10 again. Uh, today we'll, we will be doing some brakes. So for now, we're doing at least the rear brakes. You can check out a video I posted a few weeks ago is uh, installing the master cylinder and steering rack, which I'll show you right now. I got this new master cylinder right here. It's a manual master cylinder. I've got the install video on it. It's pretty neat, pretty cool little kit that you can buy. It fits right up to your factory um, master cylinder mounting location, and then you just do some fancy stuff with your pedal in there to get it to work. I also got this steering shaft installed, the mid shaft or whatever it's called. But anyway, these front control arms, I haven't gotten around to buying the aftermarket ones yet. So we're, we still got the stock big old chunks here. When I do eventually get around to buying some aftermarket ones, the... hello. When I do eventually get around to buying some aftermarket ones, um, I'll do some brakes at the same time and then that'll finish up the front here. So I probably won't do much on the front brakes except probably going down to this guy, replacing that just so it works for now, just so the front brakes are functional um, so I can bleed everything. But what I'm most worried about is the rear brakes because right now there's nothing. It's got the brand new uh, Willwood brake kit on the rear. So I'll have to pipe and plumb everything myself uh, from scratch. And while we're at it, I'm also gonna install this guy on the rear brakes. This is a stage control kit or a line lock kit from Jags. It's not really a kit, I just bought the solenoid. but. Basically, it's a, it blocks off the brake fluid from going through or entering or coming back through this valve. It comes in at the top, comes out at the bottom. The conventional method is to put it on the front brakes. Then you hold down the brakes, flip the switch that activates this, and then you let off the brakes. Then your front brakes are on, but your rear brakes uh, are open, so you can do a burnout without heating up the rear brakes too much or wearing them down. Is really the big concern. If you put this on the rear, you can use it as a, a shutoff switch for the rear brakes. So you can, before you hit the brake, you flip the switch and then it blocks any fluid from flowing through. So you can then hold down the brake, do your uh, burnout, and then you can use the pedal with just the front brakes to roll out of the burnout with a big tire car that's a little more important so that you can lay down a nice patch up to the starting line if you got slicks on if you have street tires of course you don't want to do a big burnout through the starting line but if you got uh, slicks then you'll do your burnout lay your patch of rubber through the start line so you got a nice surface to go on so it's nice it's good to be able to do a nice burnout but also be able to have some roll control and that's uh, basically what we're doing with this bad boy right here so these are all the parts needed for the rear and some of the parts for the front. I got the master cylinder nuts. Um, the brake line itself, the brake line will go through this guy and then to the rear where it'll split off with uh, somewhere here. Here it is. It'll tee into this guy and change into dash three AM. If anybody's curious, uh, I did a lot of this research myself, so to save you the pain, the uh, AN you use for brake will be dash three, and it's really easy to get conversions from uh, three eight by 24 threads per inch is the fittings that I'm using, just cause that's what the Willwood um, brake calipers call for. That's their thread size and hole, hole diameter. So I just decided to do the whole system in that at least for the rear. We might as well get started. I'll probably start with mounting this guy and then going ahead and putting in these eighth inch fittings. Kind of a pain that the fittings on this are eighth inch NPT versus a brake line fitting like three eighths by 24. Would make much more sense to have a brake line fitting, but who knows? So we'll go ahead and start with getting this mounted and stuff.
So the fittings that go directly into the line lock solenoid are NPTs, they're eighth inch NPTs, and the rest are either AN or double flare. So these are the only ones that are gonna need um, some Teflon tape and Blue Monster. That's the way to go, or at least it's my favorite. For, for the money, you can't beat it. So we'll get some Teflon on these, go ahead and tighten these down, and then we can start running lines. Next up, we're going to sink these uh, master cylinder nuts in. These are just the uh, tube nuts that are on there now. They're not tight or anything. I'm just making sure I remember just quick later on which ones got which size. They got two different sizes for some reason, but so let's go ahead and get those in there. Got this line on here um, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is attaching flaring that guy putting it on here and attaching it to the back side of that and that's probably gonna be all I'm gonna be able to do for now because I did realize that the fittings on the back side on the axle in the rear are different than what I thought they were I thought they were 3 8 by 24 brake flare fittings but they're 8 by 27 NPT so uh, Looks like I'm gonna have to find some more NPT fittings So I don't know if I'll be able to do that today, which means I'll probably just throw this guy on but then I'll probably end up wiring the uh, Line lock solenoid so I can at least show you guys that so Guess we can go ahead and try that All right, so I got the out wire, outlet wire going back underneath the car. I'll get that uh, straightened up and finish that when I get the new NPT fittings in. But for now, I'll go ahead and get these wires run for this solenoid. On the instructions, it said that either one can be a ground, so I'll probably just ground one out at the nearest bolt and then the other one, take it up to the old switch panel. I'm just gonna pick one of these guys doesn't matter which one and then uh, throw this little spade connector on it and then run it up to this universal grounding prongs up here and then the other one I'll have to extend a bit and then probably run up to this roll bar run it across and connect to whichever one probably line lock will be hmm I don't know I guess I'll have to think about that but this will probably be like ignition, obviously start maybe fuel pump here, fuel water, something like that. But uh, so yeah, we'll get to deciding on that and get it wired up. So there's the connection right there. I decided to put it on this far switch over here. Probably going to do like ignition, fuel, uh, water pump, intercooler, uh, line lock, and then I'll probably do uh, lights somewhere else, like the light switch for the headlights and taillights and stuff. I think that's it, unfortunately. Um, sucks that I don't have the right brake lines or right uh, brake fittings for now. 
That's how you put on the old line lock. So, yeah, it's a quick little semi-tutorial video, but not, not all that tutorial. Uh, if you liked it, feel free to subscribe. Keep up with the build. We're making slow but sure, slow but steady progress. And eventually we'll uh, have a car that moves. So, well, yeah, thanks for checking it out. Have a nice day and I'll see you later.